Hi everybody. It's Angela Brazil from Trinity Rep. I can't bear to be inside unless I have to be. I'm sure you feel that way too. So I am telling you this story from outside my house. I was asked to share a story with you that might be a backstage secret of sorts. And um, this is the story that immediately popped into my mind. It didn't happen backstage, but um, this is one of my one of my favorites. Uh, back in 2008, we were doing a play called The Dreams of Antigone. Many of you probably remember it. It was uh, Kurt Columbus's adaptation of Sophocles' Antigone. It was directed by Brian McElhaney. Uh, we were doing it down in the Dowling Theater. And uh, Stephen Thorne, my husband, and I used to write in for shows with Phyllis Kay. Uh, we lived quite near each other. And we were, had gotten in the car and we were driving and chit-chatting as we always do. And suddenly it was like we couldn't get anywhere. There was traffic everywhere. And we tried everything that we could. We tried every route that we could think of. And it was backed up completely. And curtain is at 7.30. So we, uh, it, we had no idea what to do. I have no recollection if any of us even had cell phones. Were they invented at that time, cell phones? This is back in like the Paleolithic age. But uh, I have no recollection of a cell phone. All I remember is that at some point we pulled into the, forgive me, Delta Dental, the Delta Dental parking lot downtown. We, uh, we jumped out of the car and we just started running through the streets of downtown Providence. And I remember the feeling of just terror and exhilaration. And uh, uh, we, we ran uh, through, uh, right around by the state house. We ran over the lawn of the state house. I remember wobbling uh, across that lawn. And uh, we uh, finally ended up at Trinity Rep. I remember also that the state house was lit up pink, which when we put it together later, we realized it was the water fire to uh, commemorate Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, so downtown Providence was completely packed. We finally made it to the theater. We burst in through the front doors at about 7.15. We hurtle up the stairs, rip off our clothes, throw on our costumes, slap on some version of what makeup might have been, and gasping, we literally walked downstairs and walked on stage. I think I remember that because um, number one, it was <laughs> completely terrifying. But number two, and probably more important, it, my colleague Phyllis Kay is a very dear friend. I have been so fortunate to know her uh, as a colleague and to work with her as a colleague for all of these years. But it's deeper than that. And this is what resident company means. Phyllis is someone whom I have held hands with in the hardest of moments. Phyllis is someone who has reached out time and time again um, to say, how are you? What's going on? Let's go for a walk. We meander around uh, the east side. Phyllis has a passion and um, a thirst and a curiosity for good acting and she's relentlessly always in pursuit of it. And Phyllis is someone whom I am so happy to have gripped hands with and run across the Rhode Island State House lawn with, uh, desperately, giddily uh, making our way towards our home, the theater. Trinity Rep. So I send this out to my beloved friend Phyllis Kay and um, send this out also with such great wishes to all of you. I miss you, I miss you, I miss you. I can't wait to see you at the theater. I'll try to be on time.